If you're ready to automate your booking system, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to be going into detail about how we're going to take a new event scheduled in Calendly and create a new client, create a consultation, and link them appropriately to the team member that they've been assigned to inside of our booking system. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, check the links below and uh, don't miss out on our free Airtable crash course. It will get you up to speed quickly and easily using Airtable. But without further ado, let's get into the heart of today's video. Reminder that this is part two. If you missed part one, we built out the database and the event in Calendly. So definitely check that out. But this video is going to be talking about setting up the automated processes around that. So let's jump in. First and foremost, quick reminder, we have our Airtable database here and we have our Calendly event. Now we, at the end of the last video, actually added a payment to this Calendly event, but I've gone ahead and removed that payment just for the sake of creating some sample data. Now, as a next step, we're going to view the live page and this is where we're going to actually put some dummy data into our uh, event here so that we can actually build an appropriate automation to support this. So let's just go ahead and schedule a fake event, pick any date and time. It doesn't really make a difference here. And I'll put my information in. And here's some example information for this test and I'm going to schedule that event. Now, really quickly, while that's happening, the really nice thing about Calendly that I failed to mention in the last video is that it takes care of time zones for us. So it on the back end knows everything about, you know, who is make, scheduling the event, who is the consultant, what's their time zone. So you don't have to worry about time zones and it makes it a perfect tool in this virtual day and age. But now, as you see, uh, I have just scheduled a new event at 930. This is a fake event. Uh, this will be July 7th Mountain Time. So I'm going to go ahead and X this out and let's jump into Zapier. If you're not familiar with Zapier, it is the tool that we use to automate data transfers across the Internet. So in this case, we're going to take information from Calendly when a certain thing happens and we're going to put it into Airtable so that we can you know, stay organized from our central hub that is our Airtable database. So first and foremost, we set up a trigger inside of our automated process. And the first step in this case, the trigger is an invitee is created in Calendly. And so let's go ahead and load the new information that we should have uh, just seen come in from that fake event that I just canceled or created. So inside of here, we see a couple things. We see that there's a new event that was created and it's the example event. Yes, that is the one that I was testing here. Uh, it was assigned automatically to our team member named Adam and all of that information is uh, showing up right here. Now, this of course is the information that I put in. So as the person scheduling the event, here's my information, here's my name, here's my email, my time zone. And if you recall, uh, we scheduled this for 727, I believe at 930 mountain time. So that is also going to be information in here that we need to access. So moving on to the next step, I have a filter built here that I will not actually need. So let me go ahead and remove that from this particular one. And a uh, quick pause here. If you run multiple events from your Calendly, it is entirely possible that you will want to set up filters so that these automations only run for certain events. So the actual reason that I did have a filter here was so that I could say, hey, if this is a particular event, then I want it to run. But for other events, I don't want it to run. Either way, it doesn't matter. If you only have one event, skip the filter. If you have multiple different event types, you'll probably want to bring a filter into your automations. But now what we want to do, we want to find or create the record in Airtable. And if you recall, let me flip back to our database. There are really two places that we're going to need to write information to. The first of those places is our clients. The second of those places is the consultation itself. So if the client already exists, 
then great, we can move on to create the consultation. But if the client doesn't already exist in our database, we need to create them. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, in this case, I signed up as myself. I don't already live in this client's database. So we're going to need to make the appropriate change inside of this, uh, this database. So let's go ahead and do that. So first and foremost, we choose an air table and we're going to use the find or create record uh, event or action event. Now from there, we link to the appropriate account and then we're going to need to collect, connect to our uh, database. In this case, I've called this database the booking calendar example. I'm going to go ahead and set that up and we are going to look at the clients table to see if the client already exists and we're going to search by the email field. Now this is the field that we're looking at inside of Airtable. So back at our clients table, we're going to look at this email field and actually let me change this to an actual email field that would be appropriate. So I'm going to look at this email field for the email that signed up in our uh, Calendly event. And if we find it, great. If we don't, we're going to create that person. So the event inside of Calendly, let's take a look. It's going to have the email here at listed as the invitee email. I'm going to select that. And here's where we're going to say that we will create the Airtable record if they don't already exist. So if they already exist, as I said, great, we'll move on. If they do already, or if they do not already exist, we need to create them. So we're going to bring in the first name. In this case, we'll bring in Gareth. And we'll bring in the last name. In this case, somewhere, Pronovost should be here. There it is. And now that is going to be it for creating the person. Oh, excuse me. And of course, email. We need to make sure to add the email address. And we're not going to link to the consultation yet. If you have an amount paid, if they are paying for this event, uh, then you can go ahead and uh, uh, bring that in. Oh no, excuse me. That this amount paid is adding up all the amount of all the times that they've paid for events. So you'll want to bring that in on, in a next step. So we'll get to that. And so that's it for now. So again, we're just creating the contact. So first name, last name, email, phone number, if you collect that in the uh, consultation as well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, push this through and let's see if this works. We'll give this a quick test. And we're going to flip back to our Calendly and, or I'm sorry, we'll flip back to our Airtable and we'll see that we now have this person created. So here I, and I now exist here in the database as a client. And so that step is now complete. Now, moving on, we previously had a little bit of a, an event assigned to here. And this is great for looking up somebody. If you have multiple uh, team members and they have their, uh, their Calendly accounts do not match the name that they have in your database, you will need some sort of a lookup field here. And the lookup table inside of Zapier basically works as follows. It says, hey, this is the person who uh, the event was assigned to. Look up what their name is inside of Airtable so that we can pass them on. But in this case, uh, I'm working with uh, my teammate here, Adam, and he does not actually, uh, he's not going to need this step, so I'm going to get rid of it. But again, just so you know, that's a step and, and one way to make it so that things, you know, uh, pass correctly. That is, if you have a name that doesn't match, if you have a name of a team member in Calendly that doesn't match their name in Airtable, use a bit of a lookup table to assign the right variable to pass. But now what we want to do is create that event itself. So again, same thing here. We say we're going to now create that consultation. We're going to create a record and we are going to again, link it to our account and let's make sure that we get to the right database. In this case, our booking calendar uh, example is the name of our database. And we are going to need to link to our consultations table. All right. So let's flip back to consultations really quickly and take a look at what we need to fill out here. Now, first and foremost, we need to connect to the client. We then need to uh, timestamp the date and time. So when is this consultation scheduled for? And then we need to say who it is scheduled with on our team. And lastly, we need to bring in the incoming notes from the person who scheduled this meeting. So let's go ahead and fill those pieces out one at a time. 
All right, so first and foremost, who is the client? Well, we actually know the client because we found them in step two of our automation. So we can go ahead and bring in the record ID from the client in step two. Now, using record IDs is my favorite way to identify with somebody or to identify a record in Airtable. Uh, it really eliminates potential errors if you are passing a record ID when you try to link fields. And that being said, I'm about to break that very rule in just a moment because we also want to link to our consultant. And in this case, we don't have the record ID for our consultant. If you recall back over here, if I look at our team members, you know, we, this event was automatically assigned to Adam and we don't have the record ID of Adam in this just yet. So instead of passing record ID, I'm actually going to pass his full name. And so we do have his full name from the calendar event itself because it was assigned to him. So I'm going to go ahead and bring him in here. I'm using the event assigned to, and again, this was determined from Calendly, and I'm going to be able to pass that through. And so long as it matches exactly how his name shows up in our Airtable database, we're going to be good to go. All right. Date and time of consultation. This is where we are going to bring in the uh, the time of the consultation. I believe it was July 27th. Let's see if we can filter through some of this. Here we go. So the event start time pretty or the event uh, invitee start time pretty, depending on what you want to bring in here. Now, I'm in Mountain Time and so is my Calendly account. But if your uh, person who is scheduling is in a different time, you know, the, the event invitee start time is going to reflect their time zone, the invitees start time versus the event start time. So in my case, both my Calendly and Airtable are all 930 or they're all mountain time. So I can pick the event start time and that'll work just fine for us or should. Now, incoming notes is where we're going to bring in the information that the person filled out. So let's take a quick look at that. See here, they gave their answer example information for this test. If you recall, I typed that in so you can bring that in as well. A quick sidebar here. If I didn't want to use the event start time pretty, I could also use, you know, one of these more, uh, you know, not, not as pretty looking uh, event start time. So I could use this event start time here as well. And actually the, the value in using this is it's uh, telling us how, you know, what time zone it's in. In this case, I am minus six hours uh, Greenwich Mean Time. And so that's what this minus six is. Mountain Time being uh, six hours ahead, ahead or behind uh, Greenwich Mean Time. So actually I, I want to, uh, you know, uh, recall what I said earlier, and I'm actually going to bring that in because I think that'll produce better results for us. But quick side note here, you know, a lot of times what you need to do is just be flexible with testing some things out and making sure that the data comes over the way you want it to. And if this one doesn't work, we can always flip back in and make sure that we pick the right date and time. Okay, so let's just, you know, quickly go down our checklist. Client is connected. Consultant is connected. Incoming notes connected and date and time of the consultation, we think, is connected. So let's go ahead and give this a test. I'm going to remove these extra fields and I'm going to hit continue here and then I'm going to push test and review. I'm going to flip back into Airtable. And just like that, we see that this was set up correctly. This is 100% what I expected to see. So we have the new client here. So we, if you recall, we created the client in step two, and then we linked to the client in this step. We also then created the date time of consultation. We also connected to the consultant, and we also added the incoming notes that the uh, person wanted to put forth. And so now, ideally, our consultants will just pop in and see this and, uh, and be able to show up on time for that consultation. Now, once we're done with this, uh, you'll see that one other thing I've done is I've set up a Slack channel. So our team tends to uh, operate a lot inside of Slack. We do our inner office communication there. And so we're always sending messages back and forth. And so we have channels built to tell people, hey, someone just scheduled a call. Uh, that way everybody knows, you know, when calls are scheduled and they're all kept uh, up to date. So just mentioning that in case you might want to add something like this for your own inner office communication 
In our example, I'm going to actually delete this uh, so that I can then take this out. These three steps are the bare minimum for this automation. And I'm going to turn this on. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a test run. I'm going to sign up for uh, an event here on 729 at, let's say, 1030 AM. I will schedule example uh, person example at example.com. Uh, here are my test intake notes. And ideally, I would hit schedule event. Now, Calendly is going to decide who I'm going to meet with. Again, in this case, it assigned me to Adam. And I can pop back into Calendly. And we just see that actually this was created. So here we have the new person now in our database. And if I flip into consultations, we see that the consultation was created at the appropriate date and time and assigned to our consultant. So that's it for the automated process. In the third and final version, we are going to be going into detail about how you can build a portal so that your consultants can log in and see exactly what they need to see without getting access to the whole Airtable database. As always, I hope you found that to be incredibly helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we've put together a lot of resources on our website. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will be delivered to your inbox and get you up to speed quickly and easily with Airtable. And if you're looking for something more complex, we do offer hourly consulting and courses and full-blown development. So swing on by and let us know how we can help you further. Look forward to hearing from you soon.